All right, so just to kind of reiterate, this is not something you can follow along with. All right, so kind of sit back, take it easy, put your feet up on the table, kind of hang out for a little bit. What we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about everybody's favorite service on the face of the planet, DNS. <laughs> All right? That is mine, actually. DNS is absolutely the most positively cool system ever invented by mankind. When it works. When it works. <laughs> when it works. Stubborn, painful. So. Amazon has a DNS system that you can use, right? And it's called Route 53. So what ends up happening is you have to have your own domain that you don't have hosted anywhere. And I keep a couple of domains just because I like to speculate, right? So over here in DreamHost, where I actually have, this is my main primary hosting company and has been since 2010, right? No, no big plug for them. I'm not plugging DreamHost. You can use GoDaddy or Bluehost or anybody else, as long as they've got the right hooks into Amazon, right? The reason why I chose DreamHost is because they have hooks into Amazon that can use them for CloudFront, right? Which allows me a very clean way of distributing things through CloudFront and a company called Cloudflare. I don't know if you've ever heard of Cloudflare, but one of the domains I speculate with is called Epic Fail Today. Right? So I was like in a particularly interesting mood the day I actually optioned this domain a while back because everything I saw that day was nothing but me having an epic fail. Right? The ADP Antichrist had nothing on me that day. So every once in a while I just go ahead and I'll retain a domain because I can. All right, so we're gonna play around with this one today. All right, so basically your web host tells you where you wanna put it, how you wanna do it, any kind of extra this, that, or otherwise. What you can do too is you can also do what's called a DNS only. All right, so that's what we're gonna muck about with is DNS only within Route 53. So Route 53 is basically DNS for your externally hosted or your externally IP networks. All right, so you have to have a valid domain already registered to be able to use Route 53. Now each one of you could make a domain underneath that. So you could do jacob.epicfailtoday.com, you could do Aaron, Josh, anybody, Bueller, right? Once we get this whole thing going. So what you want to do is you want to do what's called create a hosted zone, right? So you have to give it a domain name. Epicfailtoday.com, comment. Sometimes you are born to lose. All right, so there's your comment on it. And then we create what's called a hosted zone, All right? So you have record sets, All right? It gives you a randomly generated zone, All right? And then hooks you all right up. And what it does is it gives you what's called a delegation set. These are the, th these are the name servers you want to poke into your DNS only hosted process. So if we click on DNS hosted only, right, we actually have to go back in then as soon as it comes up and visit DNS. So we have to wait for them to make their zone file, right? So we'll come back to that. But basically what it is is I want to be able to poke these into the zone file over there at DreamHost because that's what's going to give me all the things that I need to do. If we go to the record sets, we can actually bring up our favorite, Start of Authority. Right? This tells you who my name servers are. Tells you where the Start of Authority is for Epic Fail today. Gives you all the routing policies that you can set. You can do failover weighted latency. If you do failover, if you're on the East Coast and on the West Coast, if East Coast goes dark, it will automatically fail over to the West Coast for you. If you do weighted, it will balance between East Coast <coughs> and West Coast. If you do latency, this, the side of the planet that you're on, whether it's Singapore, UK, West Coast, East Coast, the place that it's having the hardest time getting to will have the lowest amount of traffic. So each one of these makes a huge design consideration, especially if you're ramping up something like Netflix or Disney.com, right? If you believe that your Virginia will handle all the traffic you're getting to Nickelodeon.com, by all means use failover, right? Usually you do weighted because what you want to do is you want to aim it to where people are the closest to, 
right? And you can do that via CloudFront, but you can also do it back into DNS as well. So usually what I would do, what I would do this is weighted, right? I want to make sure that everyone's getting the same quality of service, QoS. My other favorite thing next to DNS, right? Quality of service, you want to make sure that your people don't struggle getting to your web page. How fast do we get board loading a web page? Anybody know? Three seconds. Point. So you get the bonus point for the day. Yeah, three to five seconds. So we get bored really, really, really fast. It puts a whole new spin on ADHD. Right? If that sucker don't load, we don't wait. We just move on. All right? So what we can do is we can also do, so we can give it a weight, a set ID, right, and associate with a health check. If we want to associate this with a health check, we actually have to make one. Or we want to make sure that when we do this, we want to create our health check. So we have to give it the IP address, which means we have to spin up a server and we have to lease an IP address for this, right? Port 80, host name, path, URL. These can all be places that we test. What it's going to do is it's going to go out and pull that page every 3 to 5, 10 to 20 seconds, however much we set that to be, to go make sure that that web server is operating correctly within the latency period that we set, right? which is going to be 3 to 5 seconds. So that health check can make sure that that website is up and running. Yes, sir? How long does that health check run? This health check will run until you turn it off. Right? Because you really want to, when you're planning on high availability and high scalability, you want to make sure that everything in your network is running the way it's supposed to run. Right? And that means quality of service, three to five second page loads. We don't want people to wait. So it kind of makes sense on DNS? All right, kind of makes sense maybe, go to record sets. If we want to create a record set, let's say I wanted to do Dan at Epic Fail Today, All right? It could be an IPv4, right? So we will spin up another server, right? We'll give it its own IP address. Alias, no, time to live. How many seconds do I want this to live? Right, how many times do I want it to go through and refresh that ARP table and the DNS entries? Right, we can also put the IPv4 address in here. We can do this as an internal address. We can do this as an external address if I go out and spin something up and lease it. We can also set a different policy on this if we want to. Right, kind of makes sense. So if you go into zone 53 later on and you type in your name at epicfailtoday.com, you spin up a server, you lease an IP address, right? Don't do it right now. You lease the IP address, you can make your own website underneath that idea of Epic Fail Today. And that's kind of what we're going to do here today over this, is we're going to make our own subdomain underneath this and lease our own computer for it. Kind of makes sense? <coughs> That's right. I have to do it. So, everybody know how to lease an IP address? Maybe, maybe not. So, we want to launch an instance. And let's just do something cheesy. Let's do Ubuntu. T1 micros, don't care about monitoring, don't care about that. Want to use my own key pair? Well, where is my key pair in this? Oh, there we go. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Do I want to use someone else's rules? No. No, I want to use my default. All right, so we launch that. And once it's done all launching, we want to go to something called Elastic IPs. All right, so the Elastic IP address is where we can actually lease an IP address for this. We pay for the benefit of having this IP address. So we pay for our use.
allocate a new IP address. So we want to do this for EC2 because we're not making a virtual private cloud. And then this would be our address that we can then attach to whatever server we just created. All right. If you guys are following along right now, kind of hold down, chill out a little bit. Otherwise, you're going to run into errors. So we lease this IP address. It has no interface, no public DNS. It has no nothing that we want to do. We want to associate that IP address with the instance that we just created. All right. So remember your instance ID. So then we want to associate that. And then that hooks us all up. So we have a, the standard public DNS. We now have our IP address, right? So if I know that this is my IP address, if I go back to Route 53, and I click on my epic fail today, and I go to record sets, and I create a new record set, I just dump that in there. And then we're all good. So now Dan at Epic Fail Today has an alias as Dan at Epic Fail Today for that IP address that I just leased on that server that I just spun up. Now on that server, I can put WordPress, I can put Drupal. If I really want to get hacked in about three seconds or less, I can put Joomla up on it, right? I can start associating those logs with my S3 bucket. So we can start building an infrastructure across the board on this one. So it kind of makes sense? on what your, your task is today. So T1 micro, we should have plenty. Yes, sir? I got a question about the DNS information. Don't you need to put the name server of the campus to the Amazon or otherwise? Um, I, as soon as the zone record's made over there at DreamHost, I'll take this, this name server value and poke those in over at DreamHost. I have to poke these in over at DreamHost. Uh, so I just have to wait for DreamHost to make that zone record for me so that I can change all that data on the back end. Because usually you take the DreamHost data and put it to the host? And Amazon is a little different. Uh, we, so DreamHost will see it. It will technically have it. But I really want it to belong to Amazon, and I want it to be associated with that EC2 that I just spun up. To kind of make a little bit more sense. Yep. Amazon's a little backwards. Instead of doing it one way, they have to do it their own special Amazon way. Yep. Right. Okay. So it kind of makes sense on setting up a zone, spinning up a server, leasing an IP address, and all that other kind of good stuff. And the trade-offs between your hosting company and how you have to set up DNS over there as well. Now the interesting part though, is that nobody really seemed to notice that there's also a co.uk address in here. Right? Why would I have that as part of the Amazon cloud? Basically, if I have someone coming in from the UK and I'm on CloudFront, they'll be immediately resolved right then and there, and there's no querying back and forth. So you miss that latency of from Europe to America, which can be like 300, 400 milliseconds on a bad day. So you don't lose time with that three second impatient page loading person with the happy mouse clicky going crazy. Because we all have happy mouse clicky crazy but times. I know I do. I'm guilty. <laughs> so make a little bit of sense? Any other questions? Think you guys can do this with no problems? Are you awesome? <laughs> Always. All right, so that's your mission today, right? And this is why I kind of wanted you guys to watch this first, was to make sure that you kind of knew how to do this. Once you're done, right, you can actually go ahead and then deassociate that IP address. So if you go back to your Elastic IP. Oh, cool, you guys didn't associate. You guys can actually go and then disassociate the IP address and then release it. So if you disassociate it, And then give it a minute while it does its thing. Right? And then just go ahead and then release the address back to the Amazon pool. And then we're done. So it's really simple to kind of back this thing out. It takes a couple of minutes for it to do its thing. The one big thing is to remember what your, your instance ID is. That's the real big one on this one. So that's why you're probably going to want to make sure you title everything with your name and all the rest of it. But you guys are free to create a subdomain 
spin up a lease, spin up all the rest of it, do all that step, because what happens after that is we're actually gonna build a functional website after this. So everyone that's been in 215, 217, and every other class you've had to install WordPress, doing a quick LAMP install and then installing WordPress on top of that is probably gonna be your easiest way to do this. Right? But it will take about 24 to 72 hours for all this stuff to clear through DreamHost and Amazon as we kind of work with the global DNS. So we'll kind of do things by IP address to get started and then by Friday we should be able to just go to dan at epicfailtoday.com and see what that whole thing looks like. Does that kind of make sense? So we're kind of at the mercy of the internet. I don't know why DNS takes 24 to 72 hours to propagate, but it does. No, I've still seen it take up to three days, which really torqued me off because I had to have that site up and running. Yes, ma'am. So what I would do first is go into Route 53. All right, we have my, my zone. We want to go to record set, right? Create a record set. So for you, it would be Mariah, right? And then poke in the IP address that you leased. So yeah, that would be your last step to go through. So that's kind of what I want to see as we kind of go through this. So spin up, lease, IP address, DNS, and then you guys are pretty much so good to go. Any other questions? Fairly straightforward? You can create your own subdomain. Just try not to be profane about it. So no swearing, no porno. No, no, I had a cool name already. All right. Uh, nothing that will get me into copyright things. So if you do like Final Fantasy Rocks, I'd have to worry about the corporate image of Square Enix on that one. Yes? Um, apparently only five uh, IP addresses can be allocated at one time. Okay, we'll fix that. Yep. Nope, that's okay. So just go through and run through the paces. Do as much as you can with what we got. All right, so make sense? Any other questions? Are we good? All right. Yes. Simple. Simple will work as a routing policy.